Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This week I'm doing an after action report of John Johnston's shooting class called Tests and Standards. This class was not a self-defense class or a women's class. It was just a straight up shooting class. Going into it, I didn't really have any major expectations. I kind of think that I had it in my head that we might be working more on all of the things out here, such as draw and grip, uh, trigger press, and we really focused a lot more on foundation, especially for me. I learned that because of my size, I have to really get the technique down, which everyone should get the technique down, but I really have a lot less wiggle room. So that's actually really useful information. I have a ton to focus on, a lot that I learned, and I'm really excited to apply that. I was able to get into this class because uh, Philster's wife, Sarah, gave me her spot and she made that possible. And my husband got to jump in on that class as a Christmas gift from his family. So we had a really great time and I'm excited to tell you guys about it. So this was a two day course. We started it off by going over an awesome medical plan. I've never been to a formal class like this before, so I'm really not sure what standard as far as that goes. Um, but I really, really appreciated us kind of going through a list of different things and jobs that people would need to have if there was a medical emergency. And that way, if something did happen, everyone would have a job and the people who didn't have a job like me would get the heck out of the way. So I really, really appreciated that and really respected that that was a major focus at the beginning of class. We spent a lot of time talking about safety and um, there were actually two main rules that we could not break. If we broke those rules, it would be you're out and um, the class is essentially over for you. So those two rules were no unauthorized gun handling and um, no muzzling yourself or somebody else. After we chatted through um, a lot of the basics and some things that we all needed to just kind of get on the same page with, John had us roll into a one-on-one -on -one time with him. So we each kind of had our own spot in line and we got to listen to what he was teaching whoever he was you know, dealing with at that time. And that was actually really, really helpful for myself watching him teach other people and getting to see the things that they were struggling with and knowing you know, maybe I struggle with this thing and watching them kind of learn how to correct that. So it was really, really helpful. We each got to have about 10 to 15 minutes of individual time right at the beginning there. And I think that really set the tone for the class. We all kind of knew right away that there were these specific things that we needed to focus on throughout the class. So after our one-on-one -on -one time with John, we rolled into doing this test called DAM, which is Dot Assessment Madness. And there's, you know, there's dots on the target about this big and there's 10 of them. And you have to like, basically the goal of the test is to, you have to count. You have to count one and then you have to jump down and count to 10 while you're shooting and you're shooting accurately. You have to stay inside of those little dots. Um, and what it's meant to do is to essentially keep you from thinking, okay, grip, okay, sights, okay, like focusing on all the tiny things because you really have to focus on counting because if you don't count, you're going to DQ. Um, it was a challenge. <laughs> But what, essentially what it's trying to test is your unconscious competence, which if you have unconscious competence, if that just means you know how to shoot, you know how to um, kind of just pick it up, you know, you put the gun in your hand and you know your grip, you know your sights, you know all of the things you need to know, it just kind of happens so that you can process outside information such as counting target transitions um, or in a real life scenario so that you can process what your attacker is doing. Um, so you're not having to focus on all of the things with the gun in your hand, you're able to focus on what's happening in front of you. So I felt like it was an extremely useful test and um, I failed miserably, but you know, I had improvement on day two and that's really what mattered to me was that I was able to make an improvement in a, you know, that 24 hour period. And that was really, that was really encouraging for me as a shooter. So rolling into day two, we started off the day, you know, John had us all kind of sit in a circle and 
asked each of us about our experience on day one and things that we took away from it. And um, if we had any questions just so that we could go into the class on day two feeling, you know, like we're back in the headspace again. And the thing that I felt like was really, really useful about this part of the class was that I got to hear how each person is taking information and processing it in their own heads and applying it to themselves. So as we rolled further into day two, we did the DAM test again, and that's where I got to see some of my improvement from the day before. I shaved my time down, and I actually just felt overall better about that one. I DQ'd again. Um, just Basically, that just means that I missed too many shots. But I felt like there were a couple of circles where I really dialed it in, and I like punched a hole through you know, that circle. Like I put several rounds into the same hole and that felt really, really good to me. That felt like improvement to me. Felt like I was more intentional about that one and that was encouraging. Then we went into some relays and those are really helpful for me just to get more reps in and to, you know, mentally just talk to myself and figure out what I needed to change and how I needed to change that. And John helped me with that as well. So the relays were really, really useful. Something that came up during the relays um, is negative self-talk. This was, I think this was my major takeaway from the class. And honestly, I feel like if I learned nothing else, which I did learn plenty of other things, but if I learned nothing else, that would be okay. Like this was a great takeaway, which was basically John saw me having negative self-talk. He could see me discouraging myself (laughs) and he pretty much like stopped the class and said to everyone, um hey, like, don't talk to yourself like that. Would you allow me, your instructor, to speak to you the way that you're speaking to yourself? No, you wouldn't put up with that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't tolerate that level of disrespect. And therefore, we shouldn't tolerate it from ourselves, which is like, duh. Like, every therapist ever, I'm sure, has said that. Like, don't be mean to yourself. <laughs> but the way that John put it, for some reason, it really clicked for me. And um, I, again, I think that was a huge takeaway for the class for me. I really was able to kind of get out of my head after that point. For some reason, that just, that really clicked. I really heard that. No, I wouldn't let somebody else talk to me that way. So why would I allow myself to beat myself up? Um, so that, that actually made the class even more fun because I was not in my head. I wasn't, you know, doing that thing I usually do. And that was really, really helpful. So So after the relays, we did the test with no name. And if you ever take one of John's classes, you'll experience the test with no name. For me personally, I feel like it was kind of over my head. Um, The targets were really small. Um, And it showed me where I was, where my weaknesses were for sure, as did DAM. But I think that it's useful because it gives me a reference point. So a year from now, after hopefully I've had a lot more time at the range and a lot more dry fire, and I'm just feeling overall more confident as a shooter, I can take that test again and see major improvement. So I think that's where that's really useful. And that's something that, again, I can relate that to, you know, my time with um, weightlifting and CrossFit. You know, there's those benchmark works, workouts, and you can see, you know, how you've improved as an athlete. So I think that's really, really useful for long-term growth. So some of my class takeaways and things that John kind of asked me to focus on were using my support hand. I don't know why I don't. I, I appreciate like knowing now that that's something that I need to focus on. I tend to think about having a death grip with my, you know, my, my strong side hand. And um, I just, I need to use my support hand more and, you know, roll my elbows out and get that inward pressure, um, as well as putting pressure on the lower end of the front of the grip to counter the recoil and such. I also learned that because of my size, I cannot cheat any of the techniques, which right now I have almost none of them down, um, and that reflects in my shooting, but now I need, I know that that's something that I really can't cut corners on and I get to focus on that. And the reason why I'm focusing so much on the technique for you and not as much with other people 
is because you need it. Okay. And that's just like a body mass thing. Like okay. your technique is going to need to be there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Honestly, prior to this class, a lot of what I would focus on in dry fire is really just draw to first shot speed and accuracy. And that's great. But I had no idea, you know, how my stance was looking or any of those form things. And I think that's going to be really, really helpful going forward in my dry fire time and live fire. I really have specific things to focus on for myself. He gave some really good like post-class training recommendations, which were go to the range, you know, two, three times a week, you know, whatever's within reason of your own schedule and do lower round count things. So again, I can kind of relate this to exercise. You're not gonna go to the gym once a week and do a hardcore CrossFit workout and get anything but pain and soreness from that kind of thing. And with when you go to the gym three, four, or five times a week and do lower rep stuff, you're going to have more of a good long-term effect. And I can see that in range time. And that's kind of what he was suggesting was just do lower round count stuff more regularly and focus on specific things instead of focusing on everything at one time over, you know, a 200 round count range trip. Another thing that one of the other students actually mentioned was to videotape yourself either during the class, uh, definitely during the class, but also during your dry fire time. To, so that just so that you can see what you really need to work on, it's hard to feel those things. So being able to see them is really, really useful. And then lastly, something that never crossed my mind um, was to switch up what you're doing in dry fire. Specifically, when you draw from the holster, don't draw from the holster and pull the trigger every single time because what you're negligently teaching yourself to do is to pull the trigger every time your gun comes out of the holster. And that could be really bad in a self-defense encounter that maybe you needed to draw your firearm and maybe you didn't need to wind up pulling the trigger, but you've trained that into yourself. So I've, you know, started implementing that into my dry fire, you know, drawing to low ready or drawing and putting my finger on the trigger and then taking my finger off the trigger just so that, you know, your brain can process information and respond accordingly instead of muscle memory, pull the trigger every single time your gun comes out of the holster. Another thing that I really, really appreciated about the class is that John focused a lot on our foundation. So our stance, he talked a lot about what muscles we should be focusing on activating and how to activate those. That was really, really useful. And honestly, something I've never even heard, <laughs> like I've never heard anyone bring that up. That was very unique to his class. And um, I think that's going to make a huge difference for really anyone as a shooter. But like he was saying, I don't have room to cut corners because of my size. And I think that's gonna make a major difference in how I shoot. Something that I really respected about John and the way that he would teach is he didn't make any definitive statements that were not very much warranted. The only time he ever made definitive statements, they were related to either safety or something that would be negligent or something that had a decent bit of evidence behind it to support that statement. I know I do it and I know plenty of other instructors that do make statements that are like, eh, you could argue both sides of that. And I just had a lot of respect for the way that he, he didn't do that. He didn't make definitive statements unless it was very much warranted to do so. I really liked that we did tests. I've never really tested myself before. I've you know done plenty of draw to first shot stuff and timing that, but that's really the only testing I've ever done. And it really was humbling. It was a very humbling experience. <laughs> I also really liked that he did a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, even though this was a class with 14, 15 people in it. Um, he spent a decent amount of time with the individual and teaching them things that they specifically needed to work on. Lastly, I really, really appreciated, again, at the end of the class that he asked everyone, you know, what were your thoughts on the class? What are some things that maybe we could have done differently or um, this or that? I really respected that. And there were a couple people with interesting critiques, but one that was really, really useful was to videotape, to encourage your students to videotape themselves during their one-on-one -on -one time. And I caught on to that about the beginning of day two. I realized I should be videotaping this so that I can watch this later. Um, so that's something I would suggest to anyone going to any class. 
bring your phone, bring your iPad, bring a small camera, and ask one of the other students in the class to videotape your time with the teacher. Um, that's already shown to be really useful to me to be able to look back on those um, when I'm going into, you know, dry fire and stuff like that. I can actually look at the video and go, oh, okay, this is, these are the things that you wanted me to focus on. So overall, I thought it was an awesome class. Next, I just want to go into the different gear that I was using and how that performed for me. This is everything I brought to the class, minus the ammunition. I brought my Glock 48 MOS, my Dark Star Gear Hitchhiker holster, a Koala Mag Carrier, a dump pouch, my Blue Alpha Hybrid EDC belt, a Maglula loader, two standard length shield mags, two extended mags, and two factory mags. The Maglula was a huge help loading these shield mags. They start out extremely stiff, but they do wear in nicely. If you plan on buying these mags, definitely budget an extra 35 for the loader. I have a striker control device on my Glock 48, and it, it is an awesome extra layer of safety. It caused no problems of any kind. The Ameriglo sights that came in on the gun are really annoying, though, and poked me in the ribs a lot. I'll be changing them out. Overall, the gun ran great over the 600 rounds of the class, but I did pin the aftermarket extended slide stop a lot and kept it from locking back. The Holosun 507K worked wonderfully, and I had no issues with the CHPWS plate or screws. I did have some serious artifact reflection when aiming towards the sun, though, and that produced a second dot and made aiming difficult in those circumstances. My blue alpha belt worked great and was very comfortable for both days. The Dark Star Gear Hitchhiker was extremely comfortable and is very high quality. The holster just seems to suck in the gun, which suggests that Dark Star made a big effort to limit where the friction is applied to the gun. I like the top to bottom angle on the dark wing because it seems to interact with the belt more consistently than other styles I've used. The DCC clips were flawless as expected. I liked how adjustable the Koala was and it was comfortable despite its extra length. The shield mags were interesting. They worked great until the end of day two, literally the last thing, when I went to pull an extended mag from my mag pouch. The aluminum base plate shot off like a rocket. One of the wings at the bottom of the magazine has sheared off, as you can see here. Shield Arms said they have never seen this issue before and they gave me a return slip to mail back to be examined. They shipped me a new mag through FedEx today, which I really appreciated. We'll see how these mags hold up. The extra capacity is amazing, but that's honestly worthless if they continue to break. Here's another angle from a picture that John Korea of Active Cell Protection took of my mag at the class. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope that it encouraged you to maybe go out and get some training, take some classes. I'm going to link John's information down below at Citizens Defense Research. And that's about it. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.